Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review. Today I am lucky enough to be having a slightly early look at the second offering from those guys at Gigapower. This is part of their master robots line, Gigasaurs Grassaur HQ02R. Now it's been around a year since we got Gutter. And Giga have made so many changes to this model since he was originally announced, trying to appease all of their fandom. Front of the box has a very nice deco of Grasser. The box itself, the artwork, that's all done by Spike Art. Now I really love his work. And if you look at the G1 style there, that's actually taken directly from his G1 scale chart. Side of the box has some nice artwork. And the rear we've got shots of Grasser showing off both Dino and Bot modes. Grasser comes in a very solid polystyrene insert and we also have things hidden in the back of the polystyrene so if you're missing any of your accessories please make sure to check the rear. And here he is out of his plastic prison. Now I do try not to fanboy these days, I know it gets on people's nerves but this is fantastic. It is leaps and bounds better than their gutter. Um, I mean, I have both versions of Gutter, and even from the Metallic to the Chrome, he improved, and now this. And this, I can honestly say, knocks Scoria out of the park. The joints, the paint applications, the overall look and feel, it's probably one of the most professional finishes I've seen on a toy. I was genuinely extremely happy that this slag was on my doorstep. Before I take an in-depth look at the figure, let's take a quick look at the accessories. First of all, we get a nice chunky flame effects. We get both of those there. It can be used for the sword and for the flame breath. I do love these. Just little tiny bits like this, which really do set these apart from the others. And by others, I mean fans toys. Are you a G1 fan? That's not a problem at all. We have the smoke sections, smoked tail sections, and his very own smoked dino helmet. They supplied us with big, huge, chunky, detailed leg fillers. Now that's if you don't like how he's got his legs displayed here and you want him to be more toy accurate, you can actually switch the legs, they can flip out, but they will leave a hole on the inside. And that's where these big fillers come in. They provide you with these pieces as standard. You don't need to buy future figures down the line just to fill in your legs. He comes with two rocket launchers, a sword, and very much like Gutters, it does of course have a light-up feature. A very big chunky rifle, again featuring a light-up feature. Both a redhead and a blackhead. As you can see we have a very angry expression here, and a more placid one. And we do get both expressions in red. Right, now let's take a look at Slag himself. Uh, as previously mentioned, this does really feel like an exceptionally high standard. It's easily on par with fans toys um yeah it's it's very good they've really really kind of caught me off guard i was expecting it to be the same as gutter uh, i liked gutter uh his transformation was a little bit more simplified i guess and the detailing was good but not ott and then they've delivered this i mean you can even tell just by looking at the paint applications it looks glorious. It looks fantastic and it feels as good as it looks. Now I've had this for a couple of days. I've been putting it through its paces. I haven't broken anything yet and we all know that I'm not the most careful of people but uh, other than me having polystyrene balls everywhere. Ugh, they get everywhere. But I am genuinely very happy with what they've delivered. Now some of you will not like this, you will not uh, like the aesthetic they've gone for with the big huge chunk of plastic on here which is the head, you've got these massive great big red horns, uh, you've got the wing sections that don't move up and down but they are hinged, some of you won't like that but some of you are going to absolutely adore this. Before we go into detailing, let's just cover the battery installation. Now, I have a huge selection of batteries, and none of them actually fit. <laughs> um, we need LR626, they are 3 volt batteries, you need 2 of those for the head. This CR1025, we need 
two of those for the sword and two of those for the gun. I literally have a selection of about a hundred different types of batteries and none of them fit this. So I will still show you how to install the batteries nonetheless. You get the back of the head and you just pry this section here up and here we have the switch on the top and that basically switches everything off. This is what the heads look like inside and what I am going to do, I am going to switch out this face plate. Do that, you basically just pull this section out, you slide that section out. Now that was extremely tough in mine. I'm going to put the red face in. We just want to line up the eyes and push those back in like so. Now I am kind of going for anime accuracy here, so I want to keep this blue visor on, but the visor just literally pegs in either side, we can just push that out to change it out. Uh, so let's put the face back in and just line those up so it slides in nicely like so. That's the face that I'm going for. It's held together by two screws and is ball mounted. So we should just be able to go up to this head. Pop that off the ball and Pop that back on. And here he is with his new head and the flame effect added to his sword. Now something that they've changed about uh, Grasser in comparison to Gutter is the fact that he is absolutely littered with ratchet joints and they are very good ratchet joints at that. I mean, me on this, I could probably lift him up by his arm. Ah, I mean they are That is fantastic. Let's cover the articulation, shall we? The head, as you've seen, is ball mounted, so we can look up and down. We can look left and right. The only hindrance is getting your fingers behind there because the dino head does tend to get in the way a little bit. Uh, coming around to the arms, oh, they're glorious. Come all the way up, all the way down. I love it. There is an upper bicep rotation. We have a 90 degree bend at the elbow. The hands can rotate. The fingers are articulated in one, two, three places per finger and they are ball mounted so you can spread the fingers quite nicely. The thumb again is ball mounted so we can get some very natural posing. There is a very tight waist swivel. We have three hip skirts on the leg, allowing for good range forwards, good range backwards, nice range out to the side. There's an upper thigh rotation there. There's a nice bend at the knee. There's also a side tilt on the knee and the toes themselves can go up and down, left and right so for a big boy he can pull off some pretty nice poses speaking of being a big boy here he is alongside gutter man these two look good together that's a lot of bling on one shelf let's throw in oversized marvel grimlock and mp10 into the mix as well this is a scale i can get behind now for those fans amongst you who prefer the more toy accurate look. Gear Power have given us the ability to do just that by allowing us to move the leg section onto the outer leg. Now the science behind this is pretty simple. You want to just bend the leg at the side knee, flip open this tab and that then unlocks this entire section. That drops down. The leg section is ball mounted so we can rotate that all the way out and then just bring this back in, tab it together, push that back down and collapse the knee back down. And if that wasn't enough, Giga Power have also kindly given us leg fillers, which we can just slide in and push and tab those in to secure them into place. And there we have them with the head switched over to the more G1 accurate head. Uh, there we go, that should keep the toy purist amongst you pretty happy. Now looking a little bit closer at the detailing, we've got these very nice blue accents there on the shoulders. They are very reminiscent of the toy, as are these clear darkened sections on the shoulders. Using nice translucent plastic there, it's a very, very clean figure. You've got the circuitry amongst the ab section. Nice space there for your Autobot insignia. 
love the chrome on the wrists there going back to the wings some nice circuitry detail there again nice use of chrome just look at the size of that head <laughs> Mm -hmm. Going down to the legs, we've got this circuitry again behind the smoked glass. And we've got this nice chrome on the feet. The legs that we've brought out can be positioned however you see fit. They are ball mounted. I personally like to have them like this if I'm displaying him in toy mode. Uh, personally, I like to have the legs tucked away because I try and go for cartoon accuracy. But I do like that they've included the leg fillers as well. Overall, it's a very good looking figure. Right, now let's get him transformed up into his dyno mode. Your first port of action is to bring down this front section. You can then flip the head down and around and then pop this section back up again. Open up this tab section on the bottom of the fist. Make sure the fingers are pointing down and the thumb is across the fist and then allows us to bring this fist all the way back in and then pop that back push this section back up, securing everything into place. Now, if you haven't already moved the sections out, please do so. Now, if you have this section in, you won't be able to separate these two sections because these actually tab the two together. To remove this section, you want to pull this retaining tab up, move that out of the way, and just grab this from the top and the bottom and just wiggle and pull it out. Rotate the waist all the way around. Slide this inner leg section back. Move the tail downwards, collapse the back pillar section, push it from underneath so it collapses in together. As we bring this section in, this section is going to sit underneath the armpit and we can bring the wing section down and that's actually going to slide between there, push in firmly and secure this entire back section into place. Pull out the inner tail section and rotate it around. Push and secure the tail section over the lip at the top and bottom, and then join them together. Bring the legs down, fold in the tab, flip open the feet from the bottom, like so. Bring down the hinged tongue section and just position that accordingly, and just pull up and rotate the inside of the mouth and then just hinge that in. Again, position as you see fit. And last but not least, just extend those hind legs. And here he is all transformed up into his dino mode. He looks glorious. That's a fantastic dinosaur mode. And the most important thing is from the side, he does not look like a baked potato. Ha <laughs> ha, winning. Uh, I really like it. It's made exceptionally well and it's something very dog-like about him. He just really does tick a lot of my fancy boxes. I love how this guy has come out. You can adjust the horns as you see fit, because obviously every Triceratops is different. The fins do move backwards and forward, in and out. The head can look up and down. We can go left and right, we have a nice range in there. The jaw is, of course, independent, as too is the gun, as previously mentioned. The legs can come all the way out, all the way back. We have rotation there. We have a bend at the knee. The toes can go up and down. The rear legs can come inwards and outwards, up and down. A bend at the knee and toes can move up and down. The tail can swish left and right. right, no real up and down motion there because it is locked into place. Now I can unlock it and get a little bit more up and down motion, but I am happy with left and right for now. Now here he is along the old Spud King himself. Now don't get me wrong, I love Scoria. He was leaps and bounds ahead of anything we had at the time. Unfortunately now I just feel that he's somewhat dated, hence the reason that Fans Toys have a subsidiary company that are now releasing an updated version of this figure. Personally, I do prefer the Giga Power scale. I think it's more in keeping with the Masterpiece line, and I just think it looks so good. For a further scale comparison, here he is alongside the standard version of Gutter and the oversized Grimlock. I mean, this personally is what makes me the happiest, seeing these two together. That is a pretty darn good scale. He really worked hard, didn't he? There are holes here and here to mount the rockets. It's the same on both sides. For those who like your dark plastic, we can just tab these in either side. Same with the top of the tail. 
and up and over the face. Now that looks pretty darn good. Now let's not forget we have the flame accessory. You get this small stump section. That is gonna slide in first. That slides in over the gun. See, at the moment he's coughing up a fireball. And then we can plug the two sections together, bring up the back jaw, and now he's breathing fire. In my opinion, Gigapower have done a very good job at compromising detailing with G1 and toy accuracy. And I think the overall effect is definitely bang on the buck. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, Giga Powers Grasser. It's taken a while to get here, but now that he's here, I am over the moon. He's a very good figure, highly detailed where it needs to be, keeping that G1-esque vibe, as well as entertaining the Masterpiece fans. In my opinion, this is better than Gutter, which was their first attempt, and I am excited to see their next figure. If you don't have any dino bots in your collection, this could be a very good place to start. And as soon as the batteries arrive, there'll be a full gallery available over at bencollectibles.com. Until then, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you have, feel free to share it amongst your comrades and give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to get notifications when I upload more awesome videos. And until next time from myself, and Grasser, thanks for watching, goodbye.